Alicia here with Terra Drift, and if you didn't already guess, we're talking about backpacking stoves today. Listen, there are about 300 backpacking stoves to choose from these days. I might be exaggerating. I don't know. If I am, it's not by much. I mean, you've got alcohol stoves, canister stoves, wood burning stoves, tablet stoves. I could keep going, but it can be difficult to know which to choose for what sorts of excursions, especially if you're new to backpacking. I mean, is one better than the others when it comes to cooking your ramen in the backcountry? We've used many of these on our own adventures, so we're gonna kind of compare them, talk about what each one is best for, why you'd want one over another, and obviously how fast they boil water. So let's do it! Right after a little disclaimer. So we tested these stoves close to sea level in warm summer temperatures. Below freezing and at higher altitudes, water boils slower. I'm just saying, don't come crying to me when I tell you how long it takes to boil a cup of water and you don't experience the exact same results. That's just how it is. Physics and science and stuff, okay? Okay. Also, these are not laboratory tests. They're not super duper precise. We tried to keep the variables at a minimum, like all the water started at the same temperature. We made sure the pot was cooled down before we started testing on the next stove. And we didn't use a windscreen with any of these products, which will likely reduce cooking time on most stoves. That said, let's get into the breakdown. So our first backpacking stove, the classic canister stove. I say classic because this is kind of the entry level, but also expert level, do everything workhorse of the camp stove lineup. It's typically the most versatile, reliable, and hardworking option available. It boils a cup of water in a minute, 20 seconds. This is the GSI pinnacle canister stove, by the way, but stoves come in a variety of shapes and sizes from a number of different brands. And you can find these Isopro fuel canisters at pretty much every outdoor store in several different sizes. All you have to do is screw the stove onto the top of the canister, twist to turn on, light, and you're cooking. You can even adjust the heat for more precise cooking or boiling. I mean, a canister stove is most people's first and last backpacking stove for a reason. They just work. It's the only type of stove I had for years, but they're not perfect. For starters, these canisters are heavy even when they're empty and they're not cheap. A small one like this costs around six or seven dollars and will probably only last for a weekend trip if you're feeding two people. So if you're an ultra light backpacker like I am, then they may not be your favorite thing to pack. Empty canisters are also difficult to receive Cycle. You have to make sure all the gas is purged out of the canister, then poke a hole in the canister before you put it in the recycle bin. It's a whole thing. And in sub-freezing temperatures, forget about it. Canister stoves won't work as well or often at all if it's colder than about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take, meaning they aren't a suitable choice for winter backpacking. That's because the canisters can't maintain adequate pressure in the cold or at high altitudes. So for winter backpacking, if you want the reliability of a canister stove but need cold weather functionality, you may want to consider something like the MSR Whisperlite Universal. It features a hose and a stand so you can either invert your fuel canister and move it away from the stove making it usable for slightly colder weather, but maybe more important is the liquid fuel functionality. A liquid fuel stove utilizes a white gas in a fuel bottle that can be pressurized by pumping out the air, which makes it more efficient in truly cold temperatures. Plus, you can buy white gas in easily recyclable tin cans and pack it in reusable bottles, like this one from MSR. Cooking with white gas took about 2 minutes 45 seconds to boil a cup of water, and it will work in temperatures well below freezing. Plus, white gas burns fairly clean and is cheap. It was $11.50 for a gallon, which will last a whole bunch of trips. There are even bio-white gases that are more sustainable. And in a pinch, you can also use unleaded gasoline, making this this, the most versatile cooking system, especially if you're traveling internationally. But there are cons to this system too, of course. Uh, namely, it's bulky and heavy. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to cart around here. Now, if it's ultra light you want, there are several solid options, starting with this solid fuel tablet stove from Esbit. Get it? Solid. Solid. 
Okay, moving on. All it is is this tiny little folding box on top of which you can place a small pot or pan or whatever, and then put a tablet of solid fuel inside. These systems are great because they weigh almost nothing, just 180 grams for this one. You can pack exactly as much fuel as you need, no more, no less, and they light easily and burn reliably in any temperature, including in sub-zero climates. They're not the fastest cooking form, though. One tablet took about five and a half to six minutes to boil a cup of water. As for price, they're pretty middle of the road. A dozen half ounce cubes cost about nine dollars or so, and this stove only costs twelve or thirteen dollars, so, you know, budget win. <laughs> but there are a few cons. For example, once you start burning a tablet, you really do have to burn the whole thing. You can't just turn the stove off and save the rest of the fuel for later. So use your burn time wisely. And they don't burn super clean either. There will be char on the bottom of your pot. Also, each tablet is wrapped in foil lined plastic like a candy bar wrapper, which is difficult if not impossible to recycle. But maybe the biggest con? These tablets smell like fish. Like they're bad. As soon as you open one, you're gonna smell it. Once it starts burning, it's mostly fine. But you're gonna wanna pack tabs and their empty wrappers in a plastic zip top so all your gear doesn't smell like fish. They're not made of fish, so I don't I don't know why they do that, but. Then there's the alcohol stove, a favorite among ultra lighters. That's because it's not only very light and compact. Check out this little guy from Solo Stove. You also don't need any special bottles to carry the fuel. Just a little squeeze bottle or screw top. The key word here being squeezable. The number one failure point with an alcohol stove system is the actual alcohol spilling out all over your bag or all over the ground. But those kind of bottles are super cheap, so no problem there. With an alcohol stove, you can also make it as elaborate or simple as you like. You can use this little burner with this whole impressive and efficient solo stove light, which boiled water in five and a half to six minutes, or stick three tent stakes in the ground around it and uh, set your pot on top. It's, it's literally that easy. Denatured alcohol is cheap too and burns clean. I mean, a quart can only cost seven or eight bucks, but it can be quite a bit harder to find. REI probably won't carry it. We had to get our can from a paint store. But alcohol will burn no matter the temperature, and since it's alcohol, you'll never really have a problem getting it to light and, you know, stay lit, even if there's a fair amount of wind. But again, not perfect for every situation. Like I said, you do have to pack the alcohol in a secure container, and alcohol stoves don't heat that quickly. Plus you have little to no control over temperature, so it's best if all you want to do is heat up water, and not in a hurry. Last but not least, this is a Tokes wood-burning backpacking stove. Yes, you can use it with an alcohol stove or even a solid fuel tab, but the beauty of this is that you don't have to carry any fuel at all for this baby. It uses sticks and wood scraps, and no fuel means it's often one of the lighter options. And when you get to camp, all you have to do is scrounge around your campsite for small sticks. Super easy. And because of how this stove is designed with all the holes and whatnot to encourage airflow, it burns fast and hot, but cook times will vary depending on the conditions and the fuel you're using. It might take three minutes and it might take 10. Plus it's a very hands-on cooking method, meaning you have to be super vigilant about adding fuel so the fire doesn't go out. But chances are you do need fewer sticks to keep the fire going than you think, so there you go. Also, that fuel is free, which I personally love. So if you hate paying for fuel or are constantly running out of it, this might just be the stove for you. That said, if you are camping in regions of the country with limited brush and there aren't any sticks to pick up off the ground, or if it's winter and everything on the ground is covered in snow, well, then you might be hard pressed to find fuel. So take that into consideration. So what situations and campers are each of these stoves perfect for? Let's break it down. We'll even put a graph on the screen to help you visualize. A canister stove is your do-it-all, reliable workhorse of a stove. It's most backpackers go to for a reason. It's sturdy, it's dependable, and it'll make quick work of backcountry cooking. If you're only gonna have one stove, a canister stove is the one to get. Who is it not for? Hardcore ultralighters and people camping in temps below 20-ish degrees Fahrenheit. 
a combo canister and liquid fuel stove, or even just a liquid fuel stove, provides that same dependability but in colder winter conditions. It'll boil water faster than many of the other winter camping options. Just know that it will also take up more space in your pack and weigh a fair amount more. But for non-ultra lighters, a liquid fuel stove is frequently the winter camping stove of choice. If you are an ultra light backpacker, a solid fuel stove like this Esbit is probably the lightest stove you can get. Plus it's tiny, meaning it takes up very little room in your pack, which I love. You don't have to worry about carrying too much or too little fuel with you, and it's stupid easy to use, which also a plus. And it works in all temperatures and conditions, so it's a great year-round backpacking option. But it does smell bad. Yeah, and you lose some cooking versatility and speed, so it's better for experienced backpackers who aren't fussy and would rather trade in comfort and convenience for a lighter pack. As for alcohol, it's a bit heavier than solid fuel tablets, but it's reliable in all temperatures and is nice and compact. And while you can use it with a well-designed stove kit like the Solo Stove Light, you can strip down your kit and improvise with what you have just as easily, which makes it suitable for new and experienced backpackers alike. But but denatured alcohol is not as readily available, and you do have to take extra care not to spill it. It'll also take some practice to learn how much you need to pack for any given trip. So denatured alcohol is another good option for versatility in a wide range of weather conditions, but a little more involved than a solid fuel stove. Last but not least, a wood-burning stove like this one from Tokes is perfect for ultralight backpackers who just don't want to mess with having to carry fuel of any kind, who love the ritual of fire building and appreciate zero waste functionality. Because unlike every other stove on this list, a wood burning stove is the only one that doesn't result in any fuel trash or packaging ever. Plus it's light, doesn't take up as much room in your pack, and still boils water in an adequate amount of time in any temperature. But it won't work for every trip or on every trail, including where dry sticks aren't plenty or, and this is important, in regions with fire bans that don't permit stoves with open flames that don't have an off switch. So there you have it. Pretty much all the major types of backpacking stoves all in one place, compared for your entertainment and edification. I mean, there are other more obscure backpacking stoves and cooking setups out there. And if you use one you love, <laughs> Tell us about it in the comments. We want to know. We'll put links to all of these stoves in the description, by the way. But before you leave the YouTubes to go check them out, be sure to click the thumbs up and hit subscribe. Then follow us on Insta, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at TerraDrift on all of them. And check out even more written content over on TerraDrift.com. But most importantly, get out there, cook that backcountry ramen to utter perfection, and wander on. What have I always taken backpacking? Like 90% of the trips I've been on? Canister stove. Uh, as I have gotten ultra light, what have I done instead? All kinds of other things. Our last winter backpacking trip this season, Esbit. We used it many times. And honestly, a zip top bag really does do a good job of cutting that fish smell. What am I gonna take on my next backpacking trip? Uh, probably this wood burning sucker. Provided, of course, that <laughs> Texas uh, get some rain and are no longer experiencing a burn ban. Of course. Oh, burn bans. Uh, we need rain. I haven't eaten lunch today, guys. I'm real hungry. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna eat lunch. Okay, here we go. Maybe I'll um, cook me some ramen while I'm at it.